Yo, shout out to the most high. It's always eyes. Even our Lord say this. LD is also known Lord. So one for another episode. I need to know when my special guest introduce yourself. Yo, man, it's Everclass Murdoch, man. 40 wide, man. You know what's up, man. Okay, man. What's happening, man? What's going on, man? Man, check this out, man. Before we even get started, man, I like to ask all my guests, you know what I'm saying, where they got their name from. And uh shout out to all the podcasts that's asking that same question. They must have caught wind what we doing it. I need to know, because now they need to know. Uh well, yeah, where'd you get your name from? You know where you got it from. But anyway, back to my shit though. Keep going. <laughs> which was the upper class part or just the Murdoch part? Which one? Which one? You know what? You know what? Let's break it down, and then we could go backwards. However, you want to do it. How'd you get upper class Murdoch? So the uh, the Murdoch came from shit. That's my last name. Uh, I used to play football. You know, on the back of the jersey, it say your know, last name. So once everybody seen that, they're like Murdoch, they just start running with it. You feel me? And the upper class part just came from um, growing up from me around my big brother. They was all upper class, so they like you feel me. You gotta change your name. Man. I used to be Dope Boy Murdoch. Okay. You feel me? Then I changed. They like man, you gotta change the upper class Murdoch. First, I changed it to upper class youngin, and that was my brother name. His shit was uh, upper class youngin. You feel me? And he like, man, you gotta, you gotta get my name back, bro. <laughs> so then I just changed it to upper class right I can run with it. Do me a favor, man. While we on the subject of this, you know what I'm saying? Go through the beginning of your like, um, yo, um, yo, uh, yo, your rap names real quick. Your rap names because I like to hear the evolution of them. So I started off with Doughboy Murdoch. For me, that was just what we ran with when I was young. Uh, me and a couple of my brothers, and then shit, I started going with just Murdoch, and then I changed to upper class Murdoch. <laughs> gotcha, just like that. Yeah, just like that for sure. For I sure. I feel like I felt like it just elevated with the music, like you know. Yeah, yeah. So, what is the big difference between upper class Murdoch and just Murdoch? Uh, it's a new me, like you know, it's just the growth. I'm grown now, like for me, Murdoch was just when I was young. For me, running around in high school and shit, but now it's just upper class Murdoch. I might change it again though. You never know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you could always have an alias or a moniker, or something that just kind of yeah, like yeah, how, yeah, for sure. like how E40 is E40 Fonzarelli and Mr. Flamboyant. You could just keep yeah. adding on to him. Yeah, he got different names. <laughs> I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know E40? Uh, a little bit. I met him before. Gotcha. How was that? It was a good experience. I met him at the uh, summer jam one time. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so you said that you used to play football. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some of your childhood and how it was growing up in Oakland. And where, what spot you from, man? Uh, I'm from 69 Village. Okay. Yeah. 69 Village, the legendary turf, 69 Ville. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So talk about your childhood, you know what I'm saying, in 69 Village, and then we're going to segue into uh, football and stuff like that. So shit, growing up, shit was just like everybody else growing up in Oakland. Shit was rough, man. There was a lot of shit going on. Um, I started playing football. I, I was playing flag football for the uh, Boys and Girls Club in the village. I mean, we was traveling and doing all, going to different places and playing different teams and shit, other different Boys and Girls Clubs around here. And then uh, I got into, uh, I started playing for the Dynamites in Oakland. I don't know if you know about the Dynamites. Oakland Dynamites, ain't yeah. they purple and gold? Yeah, yeah, I started playing for them. And shit, after that, uh, my uncle was coaching. Um, over time out, time out, was you fucking with me, man? Huh? Was you fucking with me, man? You ain't from <laughs> Oakland if you don't know the Oakland Dynamites. <laughs> nah, for sure. Everybody should know the Dynamites, East Bay, and all that for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm just fucking around. <laughs> but yeah, my, my uncle, he was coaching at Fremont. He like, man. So going into high school, my freshman year, I was about to play for the Dynamites again. You feel me? Because we had the midgets. It was yeah. my last year. I was about to play again. But he like, man, you ain't playing no Pop Warner, nigga. You about to come play. Me with the big niggas. Was you raw and was you raw and pop one? Yeah, I was raw. I was raw. I used to play receiver, corner, and safety. I was raw for sure. And he like, man, you ain't about to come. You ain't about to still play pop one. And you in high school, you got to come play with the big dogs. How did that make so, you feel? Man, I was kind of, <laughs> I was kind of nervous. Them niggas was big out that, there, that's like what in I'm high saying, school, yeah. coming in as a freshman and, and playing varsity. That them niggas was big. So I'm like, but I was ready though. He threw me out there with the wolves. I was ready for sure. Gotcha, man. Tell everybody what high school you went to. I went to Fremont High in Oakland. You know what? I never went to Fremont, man. Talk about how Fremont was. Like, how was it, man? Because it seemed like it's a neutral school. That it, it, if you wanted to do good, you could do good. If you wanted to do bad, you man, could do bad. It was, a, it was, it was wild. High school was fun, though. High school was fun. See, look, we didn't even have a football field. We had like a soccer field, but now yeah. they just rebuilt that motherfucker. They got a whole football field. But we used to have a soccer field. We used to play on. Um, practice on we used to have to have our home games at Kirk Flood 
Gotcha. Where's Kerr Flood at? On um, Fruitvale. You know Fruitvale yeah, Elementary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that that big school with the big soccer field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, can you see it from the 880 freeway? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kerr Flood. Fruitvale Elementary. Yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you started playing football. Talk about your experience playing football and how that went. Man, that shit was lit. Like, when I used to try, so I started doing music too in like maybe my 11th grade, 10th grade year. I started yeah. taking music serious. Um, that shit was lit at the football games, man. They used to be having signs with my name on it and hella crazy ass shit. So I'm like, man, this shit lit. Was they playing your music too? Yeah, it was for sure. Bubba my shit at every, like everywhere. They was it was on me in high school. What? High school was a fun experience, man. It was like some crazy shit. What was your favorite grade out of ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth? Eleventh? Um, probably eleventh grade, going into my twelfth grade, cause uh. I had I had was in a media class. You feel me? Our our school was separated in three academies. It was media, Mandela, and uh, architecture. So okay. I had I had the media class. You feel me? And um, I had built a studio in that motherfucker. Like my eleventh grade going to twelfth grade summer. Yeah. I had built a studio in there. So twelfth grade I was in there just locked in. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I was locked in working. How many songs you laid back then? I used to do. I used to do. I used to just be fucking around that motherfucker, just learning, like learning how to make beats, learning how to uh, do like edit videos and shit. All of my media class, I used to make probably like at least like two songs a day, for sure. You still got some of the material? Nah, I ain't got that shit no more. I lost my hard drive. Damn, damn. You know you're drive. supposed to keep a backup? Nah, for sure. <laughs> I lost my hard drive, man. So, so you said that you was making beats. Do you still make beats now? Um, on and off with my boy Paulo. He uh, he, my producer out of San Jose. Shout out Trumpet Paulo. He um out of San Jose. But when he be coming over and we be fucking around, I be you know getting on the keyboard. Gotcha. Right before we get all the way into the hip hop experience, I want to know where the big split was where you actually put the football helmet down and picked up the microphone. How was that? And so, um, my championship game and versus McClimates, we was. That shit, that shit fucked me up. You was go, playing wow. against the West. You know, they sick out there. I mean, that shit <laughs> Where fucked. was y'all playing at? We was Laney? playing at Laney, y'all. It was okay. a championship game. My team just was let me down. So I was like, man, after the game, I was just like, fuck this shit. Like, I'm about to start doing my music. They already fuck with me. I already got a you know, fan base. Like, fuck it, I'm about to take music all the way on. Was that your very last game? Yeah, that was my last game playing. I had offers and shit, though, but I was just through with that shit. Like, mentally, I, I was gone, man. Like, so this is what I want to know, man. This is what I got to know, man. You never thought about going to college with your football thing and probably just networking out there or something like that? How was that? Uh, afterwards, like, afterwards, after I started seeing some of my partners go to school and they was lit, having all the frat parties, and it was, like, family lit. But, like, thinking about just doing the work, nah, I was done with that shit. Like, I'm done with school. I graduated, I'm done. I'm over with. Like, <laughs> let me go live my life type shit. I, I was over with. You ain't got no regrets? I do. I wish. Yeah, I did. talk about that. I, I, I knew it. I, <laughs> I wish I did go to college, though. I feel like my shit would have went a little bit farther. Like, for me, just like fan base wise, I would have had more older crowd. Like, you know, fuck with my shit. Well, you ain't no old gray nigga up here nah, with, sure, you know, nah, you still, still got action. <laughs> nah, I'm still young, man. But college, nah, it just wasn't my niche. Like, I wouldn't fuck with it. Was you ever thinking about going to an HBCU all black college? Uh, I would. I would. I probably would go back to college now. I ain't gonna lie, that shit be looking lit. It like, is. I ain't like, never been though. Yeah. Not to know HBCU. Yeah, I ain't never been either. But that shit be looking lit. Like they be, they be turned for sure. The football games for sure be turned. Like all the little homecoming. Shit, they that. say it be like ten thousand people. So this is what I want to talk about real quick. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like down south. You know how like unfortunately we had Juneteenth and it was like about two thousand people there maybe yeah. and somebody lost their life. Yeah. My brother, he in Atlanta, yeah. right? He told me that it'd be like 10,000 people, no problems, because all the black people that's out there look like each other. Yeah, hey, they fuck with each other down south. It's way different from out here. Like, everybody down there, they, they united. Like, we ain't, we ain't united out here. Like, so everybody how, against each other. So how does that actually make you feel as an artist, like, when you love your city so much? Because I love my city so much. Yeah. Can you see yourself staying somewhere else? Mm, actually, I could. I ain't, myself, personally, I for sure could see myself staying somewhere and just, like, showing love from a distance, like, to my city type shit, because it's like crabs in a bucket out here. Ain't nobody, you feel me? Ain't nobody trying to let nobody be the top. Everybody trying to get to the top. 
But is a crab wrong for wanting to get out the bucket? Nah, no. He ain't wrong. He ain't wrong. He ain't wrong at all. Bro. I mean, shit. You know what they gonna do with him? But man, you gotta, you gotta look out for your brother. Man, you gotta. That's you right. Me? That's right. Get your hand out and grab your brother and bring him up with you. For sure. So after you put down the helmet and picked up the microphone, right? That day you did that. What was the biggest song that you did that caught fire? Where you like, you know what? This is what I'm gonna be doing. <clears throat> um, it was called No Friends Zone. No friends on. Yeah, it was called no friends on. That motherfucker probably hit like see back then like 80 80k views in high school when I was like 15, 16, that shit was a lot. So that motherfucker reached down there 80, then it hit a hundred. I'm like, man. Well, 80 is a lot because you gotta look at it like this. It's not just one person seeing this. Yeah. Like if I show my pine and it just come on right now. Hey man, what is this? Upper class Murdoch and it's one, two, three, four, five people, you know, excluding yeah. yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or even if it's you, hey, check my video out and it's two more people in here. That's really six people. Yeah, not for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I see now, I'm like, man, this shit might go somewhere. That motherfucker hit a hundred. I'm like, man, cool. I just wanted to keep going. Like, I was fucking with it. I like to do, you feel me? I like the uh, reaction. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you a CEO yet? Uh, yeah, I just started my label. It's called uh, 40 Wide Records. 40 wide? Yeah. What? Yeah. How did you come up with that name? So 40 wide is there for, for the youngin. That's my brother. He passed away. Uh, he's Sean. You feel me? We used to call him the youngin. So I just ran with it, 40 wide records. But also I use it like for the youth or you feel me? Gotcha. Shit like that. Do you have an LLC yet? Yeah, I got LLC and everything. Website on the way, everything. Merch, all the shit. Artists, everything. So talk about the difference between being an artist, right? And a CEO, talk about the difference in responsibilities when people actually want to, you know, get into that field. Man, it's kind of hard. I ain't gonna lie, it's hard managing yourself and managing somebody else, like, you know, taking care of business, your business and a business. Like, you feel me? You got to be in everybody mix. You got to be uh, over everybody's shit, like, you feel me? And especially being independent, like, when it's time for them to drop, you got to make sure you upload their tape on time. If they got features, you got to make sure the features... And you got to email, if they sign to a label, you got to email their label or on a Twitter, you got to email them and make sure it's confirmed and everything. Like it's, it's, it's a lot though. It's difficult, but I be getting through it. Just learning. Gotcha. But at this point you've been pretty much managing yourself, right? Yeah. 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 So it's like, it's kind of easy to help somebody else for sure. Cause I've been doing it by myself for the longest. You feel me? Gotcha. I'm still learning though. Know? And how many people you got actually that you, you got on your label? So on the label is uh one upper class two two, but I got a lot of brothers that rap, you feel me? So it's it's a lot of us for sure. So do you manage them or are they signed to? Uh no, nah, they not signed. They basically they 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 will they what I am though, you feel me? They 40 wide too. So Oh, okay, they, so they crew. Yeah, they they're my boys for sure. Gotcha. And is upper class two two signed? Yeah, he signs me. Gotcha. So what is what do joint ventures actually like look like? What you mean? Like when somebody signs you, let's just say I wanted to sign to you. What could you do for me that I can't do for myself? Um, get you, a, put you on a bigger platform. Um, shit. Introduce you to the folks I know. Shit, a lot of people from the radio show you, show you a different lifestyle. I like, for me, just do shit that I do. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And you said that you was independent, right? Yeah. Have you ever been signed? Yeah, I've been signed before. Okay. I was signed to uh, Capitol Records and um, the boy Dan. The boy Dame. Yeah. Gotcha. How was so, that and where'd you meet Dame at? Uh I met Dame through my manager that I had when I was in high school. So this this guy named Rick worked at my high school for me and he fucked with the music heavy. So I kinda like was falling under him just sending him all my songs and shit. And we was just working with each other. Like so I was looking at him as my manager. And he knew Dame, he worked at the radio station at one oh six. So uh I had made this song one time called uh Call on Me with this girl named Paris. And um, he sent it to Dame, and Dame was fucking with it, like, man, let's make them a group. And I'm like, a group? Nah, hell, I ain't trying to be no group. Like, I'm, I just fuck with her. You feel me? I put her on the song, and he like, man, I'm gonna sign them if they come. I mean, as a group. So I talked to her, like, fuck it, let's do it. And we became a group, and we started fucking with Dame ever since, like, in 20 what, 2016, 2017. Gotcha. So that was roughly eight years ago. Yeah. yeah. So what happened? What is the night? What is the girl's name again? Uh, Paris Knights. What happened to her? She's still doing music. She for sure still doing uh, doing music. She signed to Dame still for sure. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, do y'all think about getting back together and knocking out an EP or something? Oh, shit, it's possible. Shit, we be doing, we be still working with each other for sure, sending each other music back and back and forth. It's possible for sure. And what was y'all called, man? Uh, just Paris and Red Ock. Are y'all on uh, Spotify? <laughs> Is y'all music uh, out still? Damn, did we drop? I think we dropped one tape. All right, we dropped a couple of songs. Like, we dropped a couple of singles for sure. I can't even remember, but for sure, I think we dropped a couple of singles. We shot a big video. That shit was lit, like, you know. Gotcha. Did you ever get a chance to meet Yo Gotti? Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I met Yo Gotti a couple of times. I've been around his whole crew. Like, I down there was on tour with them for like a month. <laughs> How was you doing all this? You know, with Dame, man. I was just rocking with Dame. He was just showing me the ropes. You feel me? Just showing no, me the I'm saying, how old house. was you? What, 17, 18? Man, I was, hell yeah. I was like, down there, 18, 17, 18, 19, down there. Like right before I hit 20 for sure, I was with them for about like three, three, four years. Gotcha. And how was tour? That shit was lit. It was different. It showed me a lot of shit. Like I got a lot of work to do for sure. It's like it's a it's it's a whole different lifestyle, I ain't gonna lie. What were some of the craziest things that ever happened at a club? Like you was like, damn. Man, it's a whole lot of crazy <laughs> shit. I don't know, man. It's a whole lot of crazy shit, man. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> you like, man, we're spicing up. What what what, what it happened, man? Yeah. Know, man Any shootouts, shit. fights, or something like that? Uh, oh, uh you had to bust a acapella or something like that because they messed <laughs> up on your music. Shit. Nah, I don't know, man. A whole lot of crazy shit happened. Gotcha. Now this is what I want to know. When it comes to performing, right? What makes you more nervous? Performing in front of big crowds or smaller crowds? Um, I don't be nervous performing. I don't know. I don't know. I don't be nervous at all. Even if it's a big crowd, small crowd, I'm gonna still do my thing. Like, I mean, I'll be confidence. Gotcha. Having a lot of confidence. Okay, for sure. So, I listen to "Sorry I've Been Distant." Yeah. Knocking. Sure. So this is how I feel about it, right? When I heard it, it reminded me if I'm going in the uh, in the record store. Yeah. I would put you in the middle of Little Baby. And ride wave. Is that safe to say? Yeah, safe to say for sure. So I fuck you, with them too. You fuck with their music? Yeah, I fuck with their music for sure. They're because hard. you use a little auto tune on you harmonize a lot. Mm -hmm. You harmonize a lot. Fuck with it. <laughs> Do you ever have like a lot of songs where you don't use the voice box and you just straight gas, like old school gas? Uh yeah, for sure. I got a couple songs like that. I got a new tape actually called They Can't Fuck With Me. I'm like doing a little bit more rapping, less less uh harmonizing. Do you consider yourself a rapper? Since you harmonize, is that a thing? Uh, nah, I consider myself <laughs> an artist for sure. I consider because I can do both. I can do like different type of styles, all different type of styles. I consider myself an artist. So, what would you consider yourself now? Do you consider yourself a rapper? Nah, an artist. Okay, okay. <laughs> Just an artist, yeah. Because I can do both. I can, like I said, I can rap, I can sing, I can. You feel me? Fuck around, do some poetry. I can paint. I can play music. I can do all type of shit. I can read music. I can do everything. So, gotcha. Everything well, that got something to do with art, I fuck with it. So. Well, I'm really digging this album, man. What is your favorite joint on this? Um, Valuable Lessons. I think that's on that album. Sorry, I've been distance. Yeah, yeah. The one that I uh fuck with is I like Geek. Yeah, 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 them some turn see them some turn geek pop out like them some turned up songs type of shit. I like new wave and where the uh, and then you got the one with Capolo. Oh yeah, thugging. But that's some that's uh that newer a, than that. Yeah, yeah, that was a single. I dropped that this year. Yeah, man, how you get in touch with Capolo? Ah uh, man, Capolo been locked in. Shout out Capolo three hundred four. We've been locked in since we was like in high school. Yeah, did did he go to the same school as you? Uh, nah, Capolo went to Tech. I just knew him because he did music for me. He used to be, um, damn, what was that crew called? He used to be another crew, but you feel me? He used to just rap and do music with motherfuckers I know, and we just locked in for me ever since then. Gotcha. That's dope. Talk about some of the other people in Oakland that you actually worked with. Um, I worked with shit. I am Sue, Filthy Rich, shit. All the Trey Youngins and my brothers. Um, shit, Lil Bean, Lil Booby, shit, a lot of motherfuckers from Oakland. Gotcha, dope. Any people outside of Oakland? Any notable people outside of Oakland? Like out of our city type shit. Yeah, like in another state or whatever, LA? Uh, OBJ. I don't know if y'all know, he's from Louisiana. Okay. Um, 
couple, couple artists. Not too many. I ain't did too many big features yet, but. Gotcha. And I remember one time we was chopping up. You told me that you went to New York to go meet a fan. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. I had said some shit in my song. Like, I got fans in New York. One day I hope to meet. And shit, when I went to New York, I had, um, went to a couple of studios and shit, shot some videos. And then we was out there, like, for me, uh, in Times Square. Yeah. And so fans had wrote up, like, we fuck with your music. Ooh, I'm like, damn, they fuck with me in New York. And yeah, they do. I'm like, damn, that shit lit. <laughs> But hell yeah, I was manifesting about that shit, and that shit came, you feel me, came true. Dope, dope. Sure. And what was you shooting in New York? Um, I was shooting a video one to one of my uh, one of these songs my producer made, Paolo. I forgot what it was called. I think it's called Aspirations or some shit like that. I was shooting that in New York. I had went to the studio. Um, Pac and Biggie was recording it and all this shit. You feel me? I was just out there just vibing, catching the vibe. This was like maybe like three years ago for sure but ever since then i've been going back and forth just recording and just getting a different vibe type shit so you got family like you know nah not necessarily family i just be traveling <clears throat> like type of shit i do i just go travel and get an airbnb set up the studio and we working like you feel me catch a whole new vibe you know what you said that you met um um upper class tutu traveling right where you had to go get him oh yeah 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 i met him um I met him over TikTok. I seen him on TikTok. He was streaming hard on TikTok, and then we uh, linked up in um, we linked up in uh, Atlanta. Yeah. yeah, and we just locked in ever since. That's how I got him on the level. Gotcha. And then he ended up coming out here. Yeah, he ended up coming out here, fucking around in LA for a minute, and then came to the Bay, and we was just locked in. How was he digging it? And where's Upper Class Tutu from? Um, he from Memphis. Okay. Yeah. He fuck with it out here. I ain't glass a whole different vibe from out here from the south, but he fuck with it. He kind of getting into him. Gotcha. And uh, earlier you were saying that you made some of the beats earlier in your earlier stuff, or kind of dibbled and dabbled yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, I was dibbling and dabbling with the beats um, in my early stages. But I ain't really got into it, to it. But like, I'm fucking with it though. Now I'm about to start fucking with it for sure. Cause I locked in with my producer, like I said, and he just be making them in front of me. So I be trying to put a little shit to it. You feel me? Just to make the beat sound better and and to how I like it. Gotcha. Do you play any uh, instruments? Yeah, I know how to play the drums, piano, shit, trumpet, <laughs> a couple other shit I know how to play. I know how to play. You have been playing them since you've been little? I've been playing the piano and the drums since I was little, for sure. But I know how to play. Uh, I started playing, like, the trombone and the trumpet in, like, middle school type shit. We had a band class. I started fucking around with different instruments. So you know how to read music, too? Yeah, I know how to read music. Could you teach it? Uh, yeah, I could teach you probably. I could teach you some notes and shit. <laughs> That's dope, man. Yeah, so sure. That's dope. So you said that your label, you know what I'm saying, is like uh, for the youngins or something? Yeah, for the youngin. Okay, so how do you plan to give back? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm actually right now planning a backpack giveaway um, towards the end of the month before school go back. I'm going to give, give away some uh, school supplies and backpacks and shit to the youth. And I'm doing it at Free My Heart, too. Gotcha. And what day is this going to be? Um, what is it? April 3rd. I mean, August 3rd. Gotcha. I was like, damn. That <laughs> so like you, April 3rd. You, you going backwards? August, <laughs> August 3rd. Yeah, at Fremont High. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. That's dope because you wanted an alumni now. Yeah, yeah. I'm alumni up there. Is your, <laughs> is your jersey retired? Man, listen, <laughs> I got a record up there. They posted to put, um, I had like, what, 72 some y'all catching 72 catches some shit like that in one season my last season i was supposed to have a record up there but they ain't put it up yet are you gonna bring that up at the turkey I'm drive i'm sure gonna tell them i'm supposed to my uncle like man y'all gotta get me up in there <laughs> oh is he still coaching nah, i think he moved to ohio now but man they gotta work that for sure do you ever uh think about coaching football like are you uh nah probably getting a team though probably investing into a team you feel me sometime soon uh, let me get into that, but nah, not coaching. What is your favorite thing about this whole rap game right now? Everything, man. Just express yourself, man, and the, and the money that come with it. Like, express yourself. I see that chain. It's <laughs> paying you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he told that chain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, you, nah. didn't think, you didn't think I noticed that. Huh? <laughs> Talking about it's paying you. Yeah, with that big ass link on, huh? That's crazy, not for sure. <laughs> 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 nah, for sure. Yeah, I fuck with the rap shit though. I fuck with it. Like just expressing yourself and getting your pain out through your music, man. That's the best. That's the key to it. 
Gotcha. And you got any kids? Yeah, I got one son. So how do you balance, right, being a young artist with a young child? Man, that little nigga be wanting to do everything I do. He just be trying to copy me, and I be trying to keep, just keep him focused. Whatever he want to do, though, like it's how old like, is he? Yeah, uh, three. Gotcha, gotcha. So he at that age where he can walk and talk and stuff mm -hmm. like he be singing your songs. Yeah, he be fucking around. He be trying to dance and shit, do little shit when I'm in the studio, make a little noise when I'm on the mic. <laughs> gotcha. You now, do you have any of your music? Right, yeah. in his name. So if anything happens to you, he gets all the royalties and shit like yeah, that. Not yet, though. I was I was looking into that though, doing that for sure, putting his name down there on everything for real, like one hundred percent. Is he on? Is he on any of the music? You got a baby voice on the music yet? Um, I had some shit, probably some unreleased shit. I never put out for sure when he was younger. I had did some shit like that, but I for sure need to put him on some shit. Though. You know what they're gonna say, right? <laughs> what when you a... when you get super large? Oh, that nigga ain't shit. That nigga <laughs> won't even put his own song on. Nah, on the sure. song. Nah, son, so he got whatever he want, man. I ain't lie, he can get whatever he want. Oh, he enjoying the climb too, huh? Mm -hmm. So like crazy. So you said that you also like used to um, record videos and edit. The fact that you know how to do all this stuff, how do you use that as your advantage, like towards your artistry? Mm, Cause shit, like if I need some done, like and a motherfucker ain't getting the artwork back, I hit my manager, like man, look, I'm about to create this real quick. I'm about to do this, touch it up, cause we we all artists, like at the end of the day, feel me. So I be sending it to him, like man. I'm about to do this woo woo, and I make my own cover, feel me? I make my own reels, type shit. I if somebody ain't getting back to me in time, because I know how to do it. Gotcha. And sure. do you kind of feel like, oh, this is what I want to ask you. Earlier I asked you, what do you like about this rap game? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? T talk about some of the hurdles, obstacles, and what you don't like about the rap game. Um, shit, it's a lot of politics. Like, you got to, like, a lot of motherfuckers really can't do songs with each other because the politics, like, I feel like if if we all came together, Especially like the Bay Area, if we all came together and did music with each other, like down south, it, we grow way farther. Type of shit, like it got to it got to be more unity. Type of shit, it ain't no unity in the music. Everybody just like I said, reaching for their own stars. Like ain't nobody trying to pull nobody up. Gotcha, and that's one thing that you just don't mess with. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Gotcha. And how many songs have you had on One Hundred Six? Oh, I had a couple songs on One Hundred Six, maybe like six. Maybe six for sure. I'm locked in with my boy uh, DJ Hell Airy at 106. Gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. And what's the furthest you've been hearing your music play? Um, uh, man, all over. I ain't gonna lie. Shit, Africa. Motherfuckers that hit me in Russia said they fuck with my music. Uh, a lot of places. And some crazy places. Dope. Have um, you left the States yet? You got a passport? Yeah, I got a passport. I went to DR, um, Jamaica. Uh, Puerto Rico. You don't need no passport to go over there, but I've been, I've been a couple places. So what did? How did you feel like going out the country? Where's the first place you went when you went out the country? Uh, I went to Jamaica. When I went to Jamaica, that shit was lovely. Like as soon as we landed, they were showing mad love. Like nigga, they was trying to show, give us some weed. They was trying to get us bottles, whatever we needed. They was just fucking with it. Like they fuck with us in Jamaica. I ain't gonna lie. If y'all ever get your passport, man, go to Jamaica. <laughs> Would you live there? Um, just cause I I probably would, but if I get old, old and want to retire, I'll probably go somewhere out the country somewhere and live. But yeah, for sure, that shit was lit though. I'll probably stay and get a spot or something. Would you ever live out the country with your experience? I live in DR. Yeah, <laughs> DR, I bet. Uh, DR was yeah, lit. I bet. I live in yeah, DR. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's lit. It, it is cheap to live out there what too. Is, what was so lit about it? Man, it was just lit, man. It was a vibe, man. The clubs, the <laughs> oh, experience, oh, everything oh, it was, was lit. Good vibe. <laughs> yeah, man. Hell, it was a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up, citizen. Good vibe. <laughs> Shout, out to the, Shout out to the DR. Shout out to the DR. I heard they got some really, really, really beautiful women out there. Do you find yeah. that to be true? Yeah, for sure. They got some beautiful women in, in DR for sure. And in Jamaica. Yeah, for sure. Our beautiful black queens for sure out there in Jamaica. It was lit. Dope, dope, dope. So what you got coming next, man? What's your last tape? So um, I got a couple tapes coming, but this one I'm dropping on uh, August 3rd. It's called They Can't Fuck With Me. Okay. Yeah. I've been working on it probably for like shit, a month and a half now. Yeah, that shit going to be lit. August How many 3rd. songs deep are you? 
Mm, I really got a lot of songs to choose from, but I'm gonna narrow it down to like eight or ten. Gotcha. And what do you do with the songs that's left over? I put it on like a deluxe, or I probably just push it to another project, or shit, drop them as singles, or whatever shit. Do you? I don't, I don't really just be just dwelling on them for hella long, but after I drop it, I kind of be on to the next. Gotcha. Now, do you have a favorite song? Um, probably some unreleased shit. <laughs> I got it's like some, that. Yep, yep, yeah. I probably yep. got some unreleased shit that's my that I've been bumping in for the longest. And then once I put it out, I've had some more shit that'd be my favorite song. So it just be like that. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't got no favorite song. I could just be like, man, that's my favorite song. You know what's crazy? Because the you know the general public or the general consensus pretty much picks an artist's favorite song. Yeah, yeah, for what, sure. What is the people's favorite song from you? Um, the people' favorite song is uh, damn, what's that shit on? What's that shit on Apple Music? Let me see. My top song. Let me see. More more problems. More. It's, called, it's called more problems. It was a single on uh forty Y, the first tape. Gotcha. So so how long that come out? You know what I'm saying? Like last year or something? Nah, that one came out probably twenty twenty two. Gotcha. That's the one that when you come out, people expect you to sing that one. Mm, they fuck with that one and uh, this song called No Auto. No Auto. Yeah, all my eyes. <laughs> gotcha. Is that about cars? Uh, no is Auto about- is like I was basically just rapping. I turned, I put down the Auto tune. I was just start rapping on that song type shit. And then this one called All My Ice. It was just a, another turned up song that they fuck with. Gotcha. Hey man, so this is what I want to know, man. This is what I want to know. When you think about the Auto Tunes, right? What rapper do you think popularized auto tunes? Man, shit, I ain't gonna lie. Everybody used auto tune if you know it or not. Like, everybody used auto tune. But I'm saying, who do you think popularized it? Which means that everybody could have used it, but popularized mean popular. They made it popular. <laughs> shit, you could say T Pain made T-Pain. that shit. <laughs> T Pain made that shit lit. Like, way back in the day when he first came out, T Pain was the first one I heard on auto tune for real, for real. I got a theory that T Pain is the Steph Curry of rap music or hip hop. Yeah, he a goat for sure. T Pain, he like he be behind a lot of motherfuckers that you wouldn't even think. Like, damn, T Pain on that. Yeah, like, T Pain on that. Like, damn. Because what T Pain has actually done to hip hop is the same thing. And he a producer but, too, for sure. Yeah, for sure. T-Pain what lit. Steph Curry has done to basketball. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Before, before Steph Curry, people wanted to be like. Mike, or you had to play above the rim. Yeah, no, Just like sure. to be a rapper, you had to have lyrics. You, it yeah. wasn't no singing. Yeah, not for sure. You so what T Pain, what T Pain did with that auto tunes to hip hop is the same thing as what Steph Curry did with the jump shot. Changed the whole lane, like changed the whole lane. Niggas ain't doing layups no more. Niggas shooting from the three pointer. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> no, nah, for sure. Now this is what I want to know. In your opinion, who popularized mumble rap? Uh, a mumble rap like say the Migos. That's the motherfuckers to say. You could say the Migos, but it ain't really mumbling because I understand it. But you could say the Migos. I go Lil Wayne. Lil Wayne. Yeah. It's, it's lyrical. I, I can Lil understand Wayne. Lil Wayne though. Yeah. So I can. He just rap fast, but I can. If that's what you call mumbling, rapping fast, then I don't know. But. Like, where a nigga could really be like, damn, hold on, let me play it back. Let me hear what he said. The Migos. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about fast rap. I'm talking about mumble rap. Yeah. Like, where you, like, him on I Can't Believe It with yeah. uh with uh, uh, T-Bang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he was off that syrup. Yeah. Because Lil Wayne <laughs> is either super lyrical. Yeah. Right? He's mm-hmm. either super lyrical or he, uh you know, he used to fuck with that syrup. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Kind of slow on the beats, you know, for sure. Another yeah. hip-hop question, right? Yeah. Is that song by Kendrick Lamar not like us in the top five disc records of all time, in your opinion? Mm, yeah, for sure. Kendrick turned it up with Not Like Us. Like, he brings some shit out that niggas didn't expect. <laughs> yeah, like, Kendrick turned it up. That's for sure. Top five. Okay. Now, earlier you was talking about as far as, like, the Bay Unity and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Do you find this? And this is what I want to know. Right? Yeah. Do you find that people from other places are quicker to want to work with you than people in your own city? Hell yeah. Everybody like for sure motherfuckers be kind of scared to reach to me. They be looking like 
Like I'm kind of like standoffish, but I just be chilling in my own lane. Like when motherfuckers out of town, there you'll be at motherfucking wing stop by the town or somewhere. Uh, when that bump into, hey, bro, you do music? Woo, woo, hell, you lock in? Woo, woo. And it be just like that. They got a song with a nigga. Are you feel me? Out here, it ain't. It's standoffish. Like a nigga just look at you before he be like, "Yo, what's up, bro? What you doing? Like, you feel me? What you do? Like, it's none of that out here. Out of town, they, they more like." They fuck with you. Talk about the biggest phone call that you got where somebody was calling somebody or somebody called you to do music. Uh man, when um I was signed to Dame and um yo Gotti had called him and he was like, Yo, I got a song for them. And he was like, Who 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 is it? He like P and B Rock. I got a I got a hook for him and Paris. I want them to lay their verses on it. I'm like, P and B Rock, damn, it's my favorite artist. Yeah, I, yeah, I, get that ass I'm up, like, bro. Man, I got get him, him like, I'm like, tell him to send it through. I'm, I'm pressing Dan, like, yo, he sent the verse. And he like, not yet. I'm like, man, he sent it. And he finally sent it through, man. We did lay like two or three songs with that name. That's shit. dope. Yeah, that shit was hard. PNB Rock, may he rest in peace, right? Yeah, long live PNB Rock for sure. Now, I'm glad we own this, man. You know what I'm saying? Because PNB Rock lost his life in LA. Man. Right? Rock right. Goes, fuck. Let's talk about, you know what I'm saying, the check-in. You know what I'm saying? We can talk about the check-in. We can talk about yeah. how dangerous cities is. Talk about, man, you know, how you feel being a young artist. Do you tuck your jewelry? Do you not wear your Rolex? Uh, do you uh, ride the under bucket? What is the protocols to be safe? Send them out of town, man. Sit like me, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> like me, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I just be moving cautious. Like, I don't just be doing... Uh, I don't go to places if it's a lot of people. Like, we'll pull up in front of that motherfucker. If we're going to eat somewhere, we go pull up and, and check out the scene first. If it's too much, then we out. Like, we ain't about to sit there and be with all these motherfuckers. Like, we ain't doing none of that. We ain't sitting down, eating nowhere. We ain't, we ain't just hanging out. We ain't doing nothing. Like, you know, we don't point type shit. That's how I move. Like, Do you wear your jewelry? Yeah, I wear my jewelry. I wear my jewelry everywhere I go, but I just move accordingly, like, Feel me? If it's a place to wear my jewelry, then that's what I'm wearing. If I be like, oh, I'm about to go here by myself, then I ain't gonna wear my jewelry. You feel me? Ain't, feel me? You just gotta move cautious and be on point. Gotcha. Have you ever got a call where somebody was demanding a check in from you? Uh, nah, out here it ain't really like that for real. Like, but if you go to LA, they be moving like that because it's more like gang affiliated. But out here, it's just like neighborhoods and. This motherfucker wide open for real. Ain't nobody checking in when they come to Oakland. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're <laughs> from the landscape, too, so it's a little different. Yeah, oh, you so talking about even people coming here, huh? Yeah, ain't nobody checking in. They, they probably know somebody. They know somebody got to be locked in with somebody, but ain't nobody really checking in like that. Like, you got to check in with the top dog. Because we don't got really no top dog in our city. It's just different hoods. Everybody, you feel me? It ain't really like that. Yeah. yeah. Do you feel like in other cities, right? Yeah. Do you have like people in other cities like when you go through there like hey hey family I'm coming and stuff like that? Yeah, hell yeah, I got I got people down there. I build a relationship with motherfuckers like down there everywhere I go. So I got people everywhere I go like LA, I go I tap in with my people. It's for me. That's just some shit you got to do but when you come out here it's just like you don't got to do that. You can stay in your hotel, you chilling. Like, you ain't got to worry about nothing. What is the most dangerous city that you actually went to where you felt like you had to be extra on point? Uh, dangerous city. Damn. I don't know. I ain't been to Chicago or nothing like that. They say that's the dangerous city, but shit. I don't know. I ain't really been in Oakland. <laughs> you got to be on point out here, but. Yeah, you do. You got to be on point. But I mean, there. it's home, though. Yeah, it's home. If I feel comfortable. But, like, motherfuckers be fearing us, so when you come out here, you just got to be on point. Gotcha. So where do you see your hip hop taking you in the next few years? Like, where do you see your label at? Where do you see yourself as an artist? And where do you see upper class tutu in the next few years? Um, in the next few years, man, I feel I see my label um, having more artists, man, more growth, man. Probably signed to a bigger label. That's what that's what it is. That's what I'm trying to get to to a bigger label to fund my shit. Um, shit, me just grown more as an artist. Shit. Gotcha. And have you been shopping your music to larger labels? Um, yeah, we've been pushing around to a couple independent labels, uh, distros and shit like that. Gotcha. Okay. And so talk about, like, wait, you wasn't rapping during the CD era. You all streaming, huh? Mm, no, nah, I wasn't rapping. I was fucking around, but I wasn't rapping. Like, taking it serious. I started taking it serious in 11th grade. For real. Gotcha. 
So I want to ask you something about the streaming then. Yeah. How many albums do you actually have to sell streaming to go platinum? Is it still a million or is it less or is it way more? I think it's like a million. Is it like a million streams to go platinum? Is it? I'm not sure. Something like that. Something like that, huh? For sure, man. Well, before we get out of here, man, tell people where they can find you at. Man, you can find me on all platforms at Upper Class Murdoch, man. Brody Wide Records, man. We're going up. They can't fuck with me August 3rd, man. I'll be on the lookout. August 2nd, y'all be on the lookout. For sure. Well, thanks for coming, and thanks for coming on time. That's how I know we're going to get his bread, because most of the artists, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> that's going to be successful, come on time. Nah, for yeah. sure. Thanks for having me, bro. Oh, sure. for sure. Well, I'm LD's also known, Lawrence One, for another episode of I Need to Know, and as usual, come on, you know what I want.